name is Franco Mondini Ruiz, and I'm a visual artist. I'm a product of two different viewpoints towards art, two different education levels, two different socioeconomic backgrounds. I grew up in the white suburbs near San Antonio, so I also brought that realm into, into my work. When I talk about that, my work deals a lot with the hybridity of culture and class and viewpoints towards art. There shouldn't be, in my opinion, just one way of looking towards art. I was a practicing lawyer for 10 years from the age of 22 to about 35. I burned out. All my friends were artists. They got to travel all over the world. I was so envious. And one day, I couldn't take it any longer, and I decided I'm going to be art more artistic. I opened a junk store slash botanica. A botanica is a store that sells herbal medicine and old Mexican pottery and religious statues and uh, the store was a hundred years old and crumbling and beautiful and they were going to close it forever. With the last little bit of the money I had left, I bought this store and started adding contemporary art. That's, that store became an overnight success and I made just tons of money and the only thing I really wanted to do was to celebrate life and my culture. And the place, the store, became like a salon where I mixed rich people and poor people, uh, Mexicans and Mexican nationals and Mexican Americans and gay people and straight people. I'd have these elaborate parties and they were beautiful with beautiful feasts of food and I'd have things to sell. So not only would I have a party and mix all these people, do my social sculpture, I'd make a living from doing it. I think a lot of the work, although some people describe it that I'm working with kids or some people think I'm I'm doing just playful play with objects. It's not only that. Uh, behind a lot of these sculptures, there's, there's humor, and behind the humor, sometimes there's true stories. There's, there's aspirations and dreams and, and political statements and poetic statements that I want to make. I see myself, and I want to encourage other artists to get more plugged in. To not just feel, oh, I'm an artist and I need to suffer and I need, I'm not going to make much money and I'm, on, I'm going to be dependent on all these patrons and these rich people and hopefully they'll buy something from me. No. I want to take my politics, my life, my desires also into my own hands. So I use the funds that I make with my art to really do my real art, my conceptual art, or my... Uh, political activism. Sometimes I'll have a show at the museum and they, it's all about uh, artists getting to know each other and then the museum hasn't done anything for the artists to get to know each other. So I get my money out of my wallet that I made from this art and I make something happen. I don't wait for someone else to do it. And that is why my art takes such a commercial aspect too. What I'm really trying to do is if an artist comes to me and say, Franco, I have this project, can you help me with it? I can. Franco, I have this project, can I do it? I can. It's through financial empowerment. And that is something they're not teaching kids in art school. I was a lawyer, so I'm used to thinking, you know, what I do for a living is valued by, by society and people pay for it. I try to follow that model as an artist and encourage others to have that confidence to make a living and to feel that they are an important part of society and they have a right to make a good living. I hope all of you can come see my show in Chelsea at Frederica Taylor Gallery. It's called Feast Without Famine. It's about having a good time for everyone and it not being at someone else's expense. I know it's a utopic viewpoint, but it's the kind of way that I'd like to live my life and as an artist I hope I can contribute that to society.